Hey guys, it's Nate, aka The Foot Accountant. Welcome back to the channel. Today, we're gonna be tackling a very popular question in the early game stages of FIFA 23 Ultimate Team. How do I make coins at the start of FIFA 23? Today, I'm gonna present to you four different trading methods that you can use on any budget, and honestly, at any time. Whether you're starting the game on the web app or in the middle of the year, these trading methods are effective year round, and we're gonna take a look at some of these to get your club off of the ground from zero to 10,000 coins, and then you can even use these trading methods upwards of 50 or 60 and 100,000 coins, but specifically, these are great in the early stages when you are on those lower coin budget amounts. So we're going to take a look at the web app today. We're going to be on FIFA 22, looking at some of these trading methods, looking forward into FIFA 23, and how we can utilize these to make coins very often early on in the game. So if you're excited for today's video, hit the thumbs up and subscribe if you're new. Of course, as the time we're recording this, the web app for FIFA 22 has been taken down and the web app for FIFA 23 is coming very soon. Just a few short days away, we will be on the FIFA 23 web app. And that's where a lot of our grinds will be starting. We're very excited for that. Now, let's get into these four trading methods without further ado, because there's a lot to cover here and a lot to talk about. Think about it, right? Let's say, just imagine right now that you're loading into the web app for the first time and you open your welcome backpacks, you maybe get maybe 10,000 coins, or let's say you don't have many welcome backpacks. What are you doing on the market? We're gonna start from the bottom of the barrel, the lowest of low budgets right here with this number one trading method, bronze and silver cards. And honestly, if you like trading with these cards, you can trade with these cards all year long. People do it, it's called bronze pack method, right? That might even be viable in the early stages on the web app. But here's the first thing I have to say to you. Think about during this web app period specifically, where is all of the demand? It's simply an SBCs. We talked about that in yesterday's video. So what you're gonna wanna do is trade with those cards that people are gonna be buying. This thing that I like to do here is just normal bronze and silver trading. Flipping basically is all that it is. What I'm gonna do is set up this filter, quality bronze or silver. You can do either or. Max price 300, minimum buy now 500. What this is gonna do is it's gonna show me cards that maybe sell for 500 coins plus that have an open bid. And what I'm gonna take a look for and try to find are, boom, cards like this that have a 150 coin bid on them, I'm gonna compare price okay that card has no other items on the market uh, but what i'm going to look for are popular leagues popular nations like this cho striker card is about to expire for 150 on bid uh, and it has no other cards listed like under on compared price like under 2000 coins so i might be able to bid on this card for like 150 coins and i might be able to oh see look at that somebody else is thinking the same as me so i bid 200 i might be able to sell this card at like 1000 coins or this english left back thompson right nothing under 1.7k i might be able to bid on that card and sell it for a thousand coins the quick flips on cards like these are really easy and really really key now one thing i will tell you is when these cards are expiring like you just saw i missed out on that one card make sure you add them to your transfer targets because they will go away right so if it's a card that you think okay that looks like a good item or it already has a bid on it add it to your transfer targets and then compare price because of course since we're in the last 30 seconds here for a lot of these cards on their listing they will expire. Now, general cards to look at if you're trading with these bronzes and silvers. It's a really grindy method. You don't need many coins to do it, and the turnover should be pretty quick. You should be listing cards a decent amount under their next lowest buy it now, and you have to make sure that some profit margin is there. Like this Dwyer card, you know, I would maybe bid on this at 150 and try to sell it at 400 since that other one there was at 600. Again, undercut for the quick sale. It's all about quick sales in and out, in and out with these cards. And one thing I would tell you to look for too is look for the popular leagues and nations because those cards always sell more. And if you think about it, in the early stages of the game, people are going to be buying these bronze and silver cards based off of their nation or league with how they link to the starter nation maybe that they chose. So make sure you're looking through your starter nations because that'll be a really easy way to find some cards that will sell more often than others. Because of course, at the beginning of the game, when you do your, you know, your starter nation, you pick between a top nine nation and you have a little bit of cards sent to your club from a certain nation, you don't have many players from those off leagues. So it's top nine leagues only basically, or top nine nations only. That's a great way. That's tip number one. Again, 
Very simple tip there, very grindy, but that's how the web app is going to be, especially this year with the six days of only web app before we get on the game, it's gonna be pretty grindy. So top nine nations, look at defenders, look at midfielders, look at certain positions too. Maybe, maybe you see that like silver French defenders sell for like 2,000 coins, and this is getting into point number two, uh, silver uh, French right backs, 1,200, right? Or let's go bronze French right backs. You know, only 600. So, you know, find some stuff like that with some sniping filters. And that's going to be the trading method number two is still with the bronze and silver cards. You can add golds into this as well. Sniping filters are a great low budget coin making method. And again, where's our demand coming from here for these? It is absolutely coming from the fact that people need to get SBCs done. What is the cheapest French right back that is gold on the market right now? Looks like it's about 2000 coins. Now, here's something I want to show you. It's like something that's very common in the early stages of the game to be trading and bidding on these sniping filters and these filters where cards sell for an, an increased amount of value. And, you know, there'll be a lot of people on Twitter that will be tweeting out stuff. Here's an example of a tweet from a couple years ago from one of the guys that I used to follow and one of my good buddies that posted a lot of sniping filters back then. You'll see a, there's, there's going to be tons of different sniping filters. Now, these don't work and they might not work in FIFA 23. Just examples of stuff that worked early on. I want to show you guys how you can find your own sniping filters on on footbin when there are cards on the game of course right now i'm going to be looking at fifa 22 cards because fifa 23 is not out yet but what i'm going to do here is i'm going to sort by gold i'm going to sort by gold let's let's go with all gold all gold rares and what we're going to do is we're going to go by price minimum price 1.5 or 1500 i guess we have to say um and max price 100k because there's going to be like no gold cards uh, actually, you know what? We're going to go max price like 50K because why not? Filter by price. And then we're going to click on the price button here. And so that we sort it from lowest to highest instead of seeing the most expensive cards first. And I'm going to see right here a bunch of these cards, rares and non-rare golds that sell for 1.5K and above. And simply what I'm going to try to find here are cards that I see that are from a certain league, nation, and position that will sell for 1.5K and above, which means, of course, that's double what their discard price is, and a lot of these cards are gonna get listed up on the market at minimum bid. So, you know, Harry Winks shows for selling at 1.5K. That I would go on the market, look for Harry Winks. Okay, I see also that Oliver Skip, also Premier League and Spurs, and a midfielder is selling for 1.5K. Maybe all of the English Premier League midfielders are selling for 1.5K. That's the kind of thing that I would go and look for. So that's a great way to find gold cards and silver cards and bronze cards. If you toy around and search a little bit in, in Footbin, once the game is up and running, you can find cards that sell for certain amounts uh, of coins or more and search by a coin basis. Also, what you can do is, let's say we're gonna search by all gold, Let's search by position. Let's go right back or right wing back from a popular nation of, hmm, let's go Germany. How about Germany right backs? Oh, look at this. All German right backs. There's only three of them. Da Costa, actually only two. Da Costa and Henriks are the only gold German right backs that are in the game. 1.8K, 1.9K. So boom, that will be a bit of a sniping filter. Although there's not going to be many cards that pop up. Again, only two in packs. One of these would be a transfer card. Uh, you know, that's the kind of thing that you can look for. Let's switch up a nation here. Let's go France right backs. What do we have? We have plenty of them. And look, the cheapest one, 1.4K. So that will be a really good sniping filter. Uh, again, as we were just looking it up, we did notice that French right backs were about 1.4 to 1.6K. So what I would try to do is sit here and try to snipe one of these. If I know I can sell it at 1.4 during the web app period, or whether you're on the console by this time, searching and trying to snipe these under a thousand coins. Oh, look at that, 550. Oh, and there's people sniping on FIFA 22, literally four days until the web app comes out. Fair play, fair play. I don't, I don't hate the grind. Somebody's getting ready for FIFA 23 right now as we speak, but that's pretty crazy. That's probably one of the most popular trading methods in the early game is the sniping filters. And then again, you would just like that guy, snipe that 550, um, what, what was that guy's name? Rosier. List him up, 1.5, 1.6, boom. You get the sale, you get the profit, and you go again. That's one of the most popular trading methods, sniping filters. But like I showed you on Footbin, I mean, there's going to be so many different cards you can do this with. Go find your own. It just takes a little bit of research, a little bit of work. And that's how you can often make you the most coins on the game as well. When you find a filter like that, that maybe nobody else 
has found yet, but you've done a little bit of the research yourself to find that specific area of the market that's maybe a little bit niche, if you will, boom, you're gonna be making a lot of coins. If you're the only person on that filter or one of the only people on that filter, you're gonna be rolling in the dough. You're, you're gonna kind of like own that corner of the market, if you will. So that is one thing I'll say about sniping filters that can be very, very profitable and just a ton of way to make good coins early on. Now let's move on to number three. This still again revolves around SBC players because again, like we talked about, what is there to trade with in the early stages, especially this year, which is gonna be more different than ever. This method number three right here is my favorite and it is SBC solution trading because again, everybody is doing the advanced SBCs and probably some of the foundation or the beginner SBCs this year at the beginning of the year, people might need more squad building solutions for with the new chemistry system, which is gonna make it just a bit more confusing for people. I know some of you guys might be like, Nate, I've got it down, it's not that different. The SBC requirements are gonna be very similar, which is true, but just the fact that we have a new system, I believe is going to make people have to use these solutions more this year and they're gonna be a little bit more confused just because it's something they're not used to and I think it's gonna play a big part into making coins off of these solutions. So what I'm doing right now is I'm going into Footbin and I'm going into the SBC Solutions tab and I'm searching under either Hybrid Leagues, Hybrid Nations, or the League and Nation Hybrid because these are the three advanced SBCs that most people will be turning to right away to do them and have to buy a couple cards to get them done, but they're getting the packs, right? Everybody's chasing the packs to hopefully open something up and sell it for more coins and profit off of this SBC adventure, which is very, very possible because that's a lot of what people do in the beginning of the game for good reason is they go and do these SBCs to get packs to try to make coins on players that sell for a lot at the beginning. And again, it is a very viable way to start the game. We talk about it very often, but since we know this is where a lot of our demand is, and people will be buying a few cards here or there to get these SBCs done. That's the number one best place to trade in this early stages once again. So I'm gonna look at hybrid leagues. This is one of my favorite SBCs to trade with, especially the whole nine yards. This is one that I constantly looked at last year and I kind of started to memorize a lot of the SBC solutions that were in here. Now, again, we've talked about this before. This may not be new to you, but this is a great refresher learning how to trade with this stuff. It's a little bit more complex, but it's great. Now, you see here at the top that I see two squads with Lucas Hernandez as the face player. This to me tells me there's gonna be some French links in here, absolutely, because this whole nine yard squad, you need nine different leagues, but you need, basically everybody needs to be from the same nation to get this SBC done, right? That's why it's called hybrid leagues, the SBC group, because you need a lot of people from the same nation. So I know, for a fact that those are gonna be two France nations. Now I see Ocampos, he's Argentinian, and then I see a bunch of Daily Blind and Taglifico. Those guys are uh, Dutch, right? So what's gonna happen is, right now as I look at these cards that are on the cheapest squad, right? I clicked on the top squad, it says it's 20,000 coins. I bet if I went on the market, these guys would not be the most uh, accurate prices. 1.6K for Boscagli, and this Bobbin card is 1.4K. During the, the height, demand periods during the web app during the early stages these prices will fluctuate a ton and footbin will be behind on updating the prices so an sbc will show that it's the cheapest but some of these cards might be going up in price as people are reading the solution going on to the game buying the cards to do the sbc and submitting it from there so what you really actually want to do is like scroll all the way down to the bottom where it says this solution is like 5,000 coins more. Okay, that's what I'm talking about. I'm gonna click into this solution and look for some of these cards that are maybe down a little bit or maybe their prices were high because they were at the top of that list before and then they got bought up and now their prices are gonna come back down as people list and nobody is buying these specific players to get that SBC done. What I'm gonna do is wait for this price to fall back down enough and start buying. Because if I know that like, okay, this Otamendi card, which is, Otamendi is usually a really great card to trade with in the early stages. Nicholas Otamendi, and what's he right now on the game? 1.9K is what Flippin says. He's 1.5, right? In the early game, there's gonna be constant undercuts and these cards are gonna keep going down. But let's say I saw Otamendi last time, his price got updated to like 2.7K and right now he's 1.5. I'm gonna wait and say, okay, maybe really soon here, if he can get some undercuts or if I can win some bids at a thousand coins, I know this card could get back up to 2000 coins plus very, very easily. 
that's really good profit per card. You can get five, 10, maybe even some, some people take this to a whole new degree and a whole advanced level of going unassigned on a certain player in a short time period, uh, time period and being able to make hundreds of thousands of coins inside of an hour or two window, it's buying and selling all of these players that are needed for SBCs when the solutions become the cheapest and they go to the top, everybody clicks on them. So this is also good information that if you're gonna do an SBC and use a solution, I mean, just be very careful and, and don't just click on that top squad and assume that it's gonna be the cheapest. Maybe click around a little bit and see, okay, right now, Footbin says that this card is X amount or this, yeah, this card is X amount of coins, but when I go on the market, well, Skagley is actually, is actually 3K and not 1.6K. That's the kind of stuff that you can make coins off of and with during this time period early on in the game. So look through all these different SBCs. I showed you just one, right? The whole nine yards SBC inside of hybrid leagues. You can look at hybrid nations, league and nation hybrid. Click into all of these, the more advanced ones, the SBCs that cost a little bit more coins, 20K plus, um, those are the harder ones, right? And those are the ones that people are going to be using solutions for more often as well. And again, if you see loyalty, stay away because a lot of times people, when they have to go buy cards uh, to get a, a squad done, they don't want to see loyalty in the solution. Two players needing loyalty, okay, that's not bad, but you just have to be very, very careful. And some of these SBCs, of course, need loyalty. At least they did in FIFA 22. There is no such thing as loyalty in FIFA 23 though. So that's going to be very interesting uh, to see how they do the SBC requirements and stuff because loyalty is gone with the new chemistry system. So that might make even doing the SBCs easier, if you will. But again, since it's a brand new chemistry system, I still think people are going to need some help and need some assistance with figuring it out. That's why I think the SBC solution trading method is going to be number one again this year in FIFA 23. It was number one last year. Again, I've been shouting out this guy so many times. I don't know what his rating is going to be in FIFA 23, but this guy for the past two years has been a money maker for me. I mean, I've probably made hundreds of thousands of coins off of this one card in the past two years of FIFA. Um, I remember going, literally, I almost went on a sign. I bought like 50 of this guy last year, put them on my transfer list, bought them at like a thousand coins and I sold them at 3K th two, three hours later. It was unbelievable profits in such a short time period. And when you have 20, 30, 40, 50 cards plus, you make a lot of money in the early game. Even though these guys are on such a low budget, if you time those crazy fluctuations right, it can be the best and most profitable early game trading method in this game. So that's why I want to spend a lot of time talking about it. I know, again, we talk about it like every year at the beginning of the game, and I only trade with these cards like that at the beginning of the game, but it's so profitable and so good. Make sure you start learning through that and get that down because it is an amazing coin-making method. Now, number four and the final trading method that I have to speak with you today about is the position change trading method and it's changing big time in FIFA 23. This is going to be one of the biggest changes overall with the new chemistry system, of course, the new position change system. Before, when we looked at position change trading, we looked at cards like, I don't know, let's say like a Musa Sissoko. Like Musa Sissoko was a card that I would position change trade a lot with. His base gold card is a CDM. You could position change this guy to a center attacking mid and he might sell for 2000 coins more because of course people were too lazy to go buy the position change cards and apply it to the card, especially if those position change items are a bit more expensive in older FIFAs like FIFA 22. You know, that was how you position change trade with these cards, popular cards that needed to be moved based on what formation people were using. Now, the thought process is the same in FIFA 23, but you really have less ability to trade with a ton of players when it comes to position change trading. We don't know right now in the early stages the different alternate positions that certain players are going to have. You can see on Footbin, it shows Hyunmin Son as left wing, left mid. It shows Sadio Mane as left mid, center forward, and left wing. What we really have to be waiting for this year in FIFA 23 is we have to wait and see what some of these players actually get on their card for their secondary or alternate positions, if you will. And the way you're gonna see these in FIFA 23 is if you right click down on a card, you go into player details, see how it says preferred position, there will be a little another column in there that says alternate or secondary positions and it'll list the other ones. 
Um, and there's only one position modifier card in the game. It's just called position modifier card. And you will apply that to an item and you get to choose what of those alternate positions you want it to be for the card. So instead of just trading with a bunch of different cards this year with position changes on them, what it's actually going to end up being is we're going to have to find a select group of cards that have alternate positions that are very valuable for squad building in terms of people putting it in their main teams or into SBCs and then pick that, pick out those players and find which positions they sell in sell for when they're changed to those certain positions and then go from there. If that kind of makes sense, we're going to have to do a deep dive on this later, of course, when the database and when the full game comes out, because we're going to have to do a lot of searching to find what players have what position changes on them, which will make them in turn more valuable or less valuable to trade with if they don't have many secondary positions for doing SBCs in this year's FIFA. But that's going to be a huge, huge part of trading on the market this year too, especially with fodder, is the position changed cards in the new manner that that is. So I know that might be a bit confusing, but we're going to cover that in depth in a video, uh, of course, after the game comes out or after the web app comes out, we'll definitely be talking about that because I imagine that's a way that I'm going to make a lot of coins in the early game as well. So we talked through four different trading methods today. I hope it was very, very helpful because again, I, the number one thing you have to think about in the early stages of any FIFA, whether it's, you know, whether you're on the web app and it's really grindy or whether you're even in the game, just starting your account fresh, it's a grind, right? That's the best word to kind of summarize what is going to be going on is it's going to be a grind trading with those low budget method, you know, kind of stuff, the bronze, the silvers, the gold commons and rares until you build that coin balance up to really above 100, 200,000 coins. These are the best trading methods to be doing and to be using to get that coin balance up ASAP. And then you can go ahead, buy your team or invest in bigger cards for bigger rises and just have more fun in the game in general when you have more coins. So hopefully today's video was very helpful for you because I know that I will be using all of these methods and more at the beginning of FIFA 23. So if you want to stay locked in and ready for all the market analysis and trading methods going forward at the start of the game, make sure to hit the subscribe button so you're around for a new video. Hit the notification bell so you don't miss it. If you enjoyed today's video, smash the thumbs up. And of course, comment down below if you have any questions about these trading methods that we talked about today. If you want any more info, I'll be responding to a few of the comments down below as well. But if you're excited for FIFA 23, again, hit that like button and I will see you in a video very soon. It's been Nathan, put account and catch you guys later. Peace out.